This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in this lesson we're going to continue our discussion on bins. Now we really talked about the meat and potatoes of bins in the last lesson. This lesson's all going to sort of be about those hidden gems, those things that might not jump out at you right away, but definitely uh, little tips and techniques that you're going to want to use to keep you organized and obviously by keeping you organized it's going to keep you editing as quickly as you possibly can. We're going to start out in the actual bin itself, then what I'm going to do is move on to the bin drop down menu at the top of the composer window and I'm going to show you not all of the features in there but a lot of the different features in there that you might not know what they do but once you see them you're definitely going to want to keep them in your back pocket so that you can pull them out and use them to really get ahead in your editing. Okay, short introduction here, let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer. Now that's obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. And let's open my Motocross bin because this is where I have all that footage from Digital Juice's Video Tracks HD. There we go. I purposely kept one of the clips offline so that you could see how they do actually appear properly inside a bin. And you'll remember from the last lesson, if I wanted to have the bin set up just like this and I wanted to have all the clips fill this window, no problem. All I need to do is come up to the bin uh, drop down right up here and I could simply come down to fill window and there we now go all of the clips are now organized inside of the bin okay but what I really want to do is I want to switch back to list view and we talked a little bit about list view and how we can get in and create our different bin layouts so that we can have all of the different information that we might want to have now there's another layout that I highly encourage you to use now you can see right now I have mine set up in my clips view right down here at the bottom and you'll remember clips view right here if we click on the drop down we can see the different views we have and I also have my time of day clips view what I'm going to do, and you'll remember from the last lesson, if I come back into settings, I can easily delete that because I'm going to create a new one in just a second. But the new view that I want to talk about and one parameter that you're going to want to add in, in at least one specific bin setting is the color setting. And I'm going to show you why you're going to want to do that. What I'm going to do is come down to the fast menu. I'm simply going to click on it. We're going to come up to choose columns right here. And right here in the bin column selection, I'm going to simply choose color and I'm going to say OK. Now color appears beside the actual clip icon, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it over because I want it to appear first. Now you're probably thinking, well, Kev, they're all grayed out. Really doesn't do anything. Why would you want to have that there? Well, there's a reason. Now right now I have all clips. And they're AMA linked to clips. And remember, we can tell because we have that little link icon. But you know, as you go through and you start logging your footage and you start taking a look at it, you're going to know right away which are the good clips and which are the clips that you're definitely not going to use. Now, this tip is especially important for assistants. So if you're an editor and you're watching this and you have an assistant working with you, you're definitely going to want to show them this. Because let's say hypothetically I know in my bin which clips are good and which clips are not good. What I can simply do, instead of going in and saying, you know, this is the clip name, dash, bad, or even deleting them, because, you know, in a lot of cases, a clip that I might think is bad, another editor might be able to use for something in their project. So all I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go through and I'm going to color code them with green being good and red being not good. So how we do that is very simple. All I'm going to do is simply right click on the color and now I can simply say, well, this clip is good, this clip is good, this clip is no good, this clip is no good, and etc etc. And what's great is, and I'm just going to go in and we'll do this with a few more here, and I'll just throw some reds in here, is that once we're done we can actually sort. Now sorting is a way that you can get in and basically go from alphanumeric order from you know A to Z or you know 1 to 10 etc etc based on whichever column you happen to select. Now let's just choose duration as an example. So let's say I wanted to sort from the shortest duration to the longest duration. It's actually very easy. All I need to do is simply click on the duration column right here. Now, of course, again, this could be any column that I click on. And all I'm going to do is simply press Command and E on the Mac, Control and E on Windows. And that's going to sort everything from the lowest duration to the highest duration. Now, of course, on the flip side of that, let's say I wanted to go from the highest duration to the lowest duration. No problem. Command, Option, and E on the Mac, Control, Alt, and E on Windows is going to reverse the sort. 
So you see a very quick way to get in and sort clips. If you, you know, if, let's say the producer said, oh, you know, I know that's one of the shortest clips I shot, no problem. You can simply get in and sift them just like that. What you can also do, of course, with any column is you can sort it just like that as well. And you can see right now, if I come in, it's sorted by the green first and the red second. And of course, if we want to swap that. And of course, it's left the ones that don't have a color associated with them last. And of course, I can reverse that just like such. Another great way to get in and quickly organize things and get the, and really get in and find the shots that you want to use right away. Okay, now let's talk about another cool organizational technique. Now to do this, I'm going to need a couple of things. And what I'm going to do is for right now, I'm just going to remove that color column. Let's just switch back to our clip suit. Now, of course, if I wanted to save that uh, color column there, what I would do is I would call that, you know, clips color view and I would save that as a bin view right down here at the bottom of the bin window. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a couple new things here. Now, of course, I'm jumping a little bit ahead. I'm talking about creating a new title, but these titles don't really mean anything and they're just really going to be there for the purpose of me showing you what exactly is going on. So I'm just going to say save and what I'm also going to do is make a new sequence here. Just drop that in because I want to have these different things in my bin. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear the monitor so I don't have to see that. Now don't worry, we're going to get into all of this when we get to editing in a later tutorial. But you'll see right now that I have a sequence, I have a title, and I have all of my clips. Now really, you know, I have one title, but let's say hypothetically you're working on a project, you've got a couple bins, and you've been going through and you've been updating titles. Now you're going to find out more about titles when we get to them, but what's important to keep in mind with a title is that it's actually a rendered piece of media. It's not like in Premiere or in Final Cut where it's a generated piece of media. If you, you know you click on something else, come back, it's gone. No, this is an actual real clip of media just like any other clip you might double click on. So if I happen to click on this clip, there you go. Same thing with a title. Now what's going to happen is as you start updating titles, every time you save a new title, it's going to update it into that bin. So you might very well have, you know, a hundred different titles. What I'm going to do is just duplicate some of these here, just to give you an idea of what this might look like. You know, you might have like this type of thing. Okay, now of course, when we sift in a bin, it's going to go by a specific hierarchy. It's always going to put sequences first, clip second, and titles last. Okay, so that's something important to keep in mind. So if you need to get that uh, title or the sequence at the very top of your bin, no problem. You can simply click on the, uh, the clip view or the actual icon column. Simply use your sort, Command and E, Control and E on Windows, and you can quickly sort them into that specific order. Okay, but that's not what I wanted to show you because we just talked about that. What I want to do is talk about how we can get rid of these titles without actually getting rid of them at all. Most people think that, oh, well, maybe Kev, what you do is come in and delete them. Well, I'm not going to do that because if I delete them, they're obviously going to be deleted from the project, deleted from my timeline. That's not what I want. I just want to hide them. So how do I go about doing that? Well, let's say in this bin, I want to keep the clips and the sequences, but I want to hide these titles. What we're going to do is we're going to come back to the fast menu and what we're going to do is we're going to come up to set bin display. What this basically is, is it's saying, okay, what do you want to see in your bins? You'll see right now I have it set to show me almost everything, just not to show me the rendered effects and the sources, but pretty much to show me everything else except the reference clips. Now I'm going to talk about reference clips in just a second. What I want to do is I don't want to show any of those rendered titles or those effects. So all I'm going to do is simply turn off the effects. I'm simply going to say OK and those titles are going to disappear. What's important to keep in mind is they're still there. They're not just being displayed in my bin. So this is another way that you can get in and really get in and organize and keep yourself nice and organized because like I said, once you start having longer sequences that have you know a ton of titles that you're constantly updating, you might have a whole ton of them in the bin. You know, you're going to get to organizing later. You just want to just clear them out of there so you don't have to see them. You can simply turn them off. Just remember to come back into your set bin display if you ever want to see them again and simply turn that on. Now there's another one in here called show reference clips. So what does that mean? What I'm going to do is with my sequence here, I'm just going to drop a couple other clips at the end of them here. Okay. And hopefully I've got, there we go. Good. I've got in and out points in pretty much all these clips. So that's good. 
Okay, And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this sequence into, appropriately enough, how about a sequences bin. Okay, So the question is, how do I know what clips are associated with this sequence? Well, I could go through and start match framing each one of these clips and getting them up here and just, you know, be writing frantically, you know, like crazy. Or what I can do is I can just tell Media Composer that I want inside of this bin to be shown what clips are being referenced in this sequence. So how do we do that? Very simple. We're going to head back up to our set bin display and all I'm going to do is say, show the reference clips. As soon as I say OK, there are the four clips that are associated with this sequence. You can see 958. Where's 958? There it is right there. You can see 957, 957. So this is a very handy way if a producer said, hey, Kev, you know, can you send me a quick email you know, with a snapshot of what clips we used in that sequence? I can simply set the bin display on the Mac or even on Windows. You can use the snipping tool. What I'm going to do on the Mac is just simply hit Command, Shift, and 4. I can actually take a snapshot of this. It's going to then appear on my desktop, and guess what? I can now take this and email this to anybody who might need to see it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my bin display back where I had it before. Let's just turn off Show Reference Clips because I want to talk about a few of the parameters. Let me just call this Kevin Sequence. There we go. Okay, because I want to talk about a few specific things inside of the bin dropdown. Now we're going to get into a few things like capturing and DVC and extraction that goes along with capturing. But you'll see there's some things in here that we already know about. For example, choose column. You'll see we have multiple ways to get to the same thing. But what I want to talk about in here, actually inside the bin dropdown, is actually right down here. It's really these ones right here. You'll see there's, again, set bin display. But I want to talk about the select offline items, select media relatives, and I want to talk about the select unreferenced clips, because these are really ones that when you're editing, you're going to be using all the time. And of course, we're talking about them in a bin setting because that's really where you're going to get in and you're going to see this information is inside of your bin. OK, now for the first one, let's talk about select offline items. OK, and what I'm going to do to get that is I'm just going to come back to my motocross clips here because I specifically had a clip that was offline. Now, let's just come back in here because I don't want to see those titles. And you'll remember that when I was in frame view, I had that one clip that was media offline. But let's say I don't want to be switching back and forth and I just quickly want to see what clips inside of this bin are offline because maybe I have to re-import them, I have to recapture them. No problem, very simple. All I'm going to do is simply navigate up to bin. I'm going to come down to select offline items and Media Composer is going to show me which clip is offline immediately so I can re-import it or I can recapture it. Very handy to have. Like I said, you could be going back and forth. When you have one clip that you're dealing with, very simple, you could be dealing with 20, 30, 50, 100 different clips. So going this route is a you know really sort of the ideal way to do it. Okay, let me just switch back to list view for a second. Now the next one that I want to talk about up here in the bin dropdown is the select media relatives. So what does that mean exactly? Well, if I want to get in and I have this sequence here that I have up and I want to see which clips I'm using inside of my bin, it's very simple. All I need to do is with that sequence selected, I can come up to bin, I can say select media relatives and you can see right down here, it's now highlighted those clips because maybe I want to take those clips and I want to move them into their own bin. Maybe I'm going to call this used clips or something like that. But again, a very simple way to get in and keep yourself nice and organized when you're working in your timelines. Okay, let me just close my blue clips. I might need to open that again in just a second, but that's okay. Okay, up here in bin, the next one that I want to talk about is the unreferenced clips. Now, much like the media relatives, meaning relatives of whatever I selected, so if I selected a sequence, it's going to show me all of the children that are associated with that parent or that sequence. Selecting the show me the unreferenced clips is basically telling Media Composer, hey, take a look at this sequence, take a look at all the clips that are in that sequence, but then show me everything that hasn't been referenced by that sequence. You'll see a pop-up has appeared telling me that select unreferenced clips will select all the clips that are unreferenced by any sequences in currently open bins. References to clips in bins that are closed are not going to be taken into account, which is pretty self-explanatory. Now, what's important to keep in mind about the technique of show and reference clips is you need to select the bin that has your clips in it. You leave the sequence bin open, and what I'm going to do is just deselect everything here, head back up to bin, select unreferenced clips. You'll see select unreferenced clips again. I'm simply going to say OK, 
And now what has happened is you'll see it's telling me that these clips are not referenced in any sequence, in any bin that happens to be open. Now what I could do again is I could come back up to my blue clips bin and let's say I took these clips and dragged them in here and I was gonna call this bin now not used clips. So now the editor that's coming in behind me will know what B-roll he has to work with or she for that matter to quickly get in and add whatever we need to add to this show. Okay, so that really wraps up our look at bins. Now, as we go, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about sort of ins and outs of bins. But what I wanna do in the next lesson is I wanna get in and talk about getting media into Media Composer for you to start editing with. I know we sort of talked a little bit about, you know, sort of laying the foundation and things like that, but it's important for you to understand how bins work before you get in and really start messing around with footage because you wanna make sure that you keep nice and organized so your edits go as smoothly as possible every time. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.